गुड इवनिंग आई एम डॉक्टर वैष्णवी I hope uh, all of you are able to see me and listen to me. If you are, please uh, mark it in the comment section that you are able to see me and listen to me, so that we can begin our class today. I can't see any of your messages on my phone. Okay, so I got a message from Pet Venkat that uh, I okay, can start so the class. Okay, I got a message from Pet Venkat. Okay, so the first question is: Endoscopic intranasal approach is used for accessing all except lacrimal gland, CSF leak, pituitary gland, optic nerve. So you can put your answers in the comment section. I will discuss the MCQ once you are uh, thorough with. or once you have put your answers so endoscopic intranasal approach is used for is it used for lacrimal gland for csf leak for pituitary gland optic nerve and they're asking you an except question it is used in all these procedures except which one dilpreet you are correct vera shubham you are wrong so if you go and say what are the uses of endoscopic transnasal approach so if you come transnasally so once you are entering transnasally you can enter into the medial wall of the orbit so you can treat the lesions in the medial compartment of the orbit and the inferior compartment joining to form the common canaliculus this common canaliculus opens into lacrimal sac okay so it is used for lacrimal sac decompression or whenever you want to open this lacrimal sac into the nose instead of an external dacrocystorhinostomy you are doing an intranasal dacrocystorhinostomy through an endoscopic transnasal approach so it is used for lacrimal sac lacrimal gland is present here lacrimal sac is present at your medial canthus it is also used for transnasally approach to the sphenoid sinus from the sphenoid sinus you can reach to the cella turcica and And treat your pituitary macro adenomas. Okay, so these are the various extended approaches of transnasal endoscopic surgeries. So for your orbital pathologies, for your optic nerve pathologies, for your lacrimal sac, for your pituitary gland, and anywhere if you have got a CSF leak, you can treat transnasal endoscopically. only the posterior wall of the frontal sinus transnasal endoscopically to reach vertically 90 degrees upwards to reach the posterior wall of frontal sinus it is difficult but the rest of everything else can be treated by your uh, by your transnasal endoscopic approach so from further down from the at the level of your face to your planum sphenoidal anywhere or roof of the sphenoid if you have got a csf leak you can treat it but as leaks are often difficult so these are all the extended approaches of now i think it should be okay is it is the clear uh, is the connection clear now or you are having any hang right now as well which of the following is not true about the appearance of tympanic membrane so a red tympanic membrane is maybe normal in a crying child a retracted tympanic membrane shows prominent lateral process of malleus and foreshortened handle of malleus a bulging tympanic membrane loses all landmarks creating a positive or negative pressure with a segal speculum or pneumatic otoscope has no effect on movement of normal tympanic membrane so which is not true about the appearance of tympanic membrane so can you put your answers in the comment section and then we can discuss this mcq
so which is not true about the appearance of the tympanic membrane so i want you all to answer in your comment section see a red tympanic membrane in a normal child is this correct answer or wrong answer this is the correct answer because a red tympanic membrane may be normal when a child cries the tympanic membrane gets congested so when the tympanic membrane gets congested you will have a red tm so this is correct so this is a true answer a retracted tympanic membrane so when a tympanic membrane gets retracted so this is your tympanic membrane this is your anterior malleolar fold this is your posterior malleolar fold this is your uh, attic this is your annular so once a tympanic membrane gets retracted your malleolar folds become more prominent handle of malleus becomes more prominent and looks foreshortened lateral process becomes prominent so these are all the features of a retracted tympanic membrane so this is also a true answer once it bulges obviously when the tympanic membrane is bulging no clear landmarks are seen behind that so this is also true answer creation of positive pressure or negative pressure with seagull speculum or pneumatic otoscope has no effect yes it has effect when you increase or decrease the pressure in the external auditory canal depending upon the middle ear status so this is your tympanic membrane if the middle ear has air the tympanic membrane vibration will be well when you increase or decrease the pressure and that you can see on pneumatic otoscopy where you have the oral speculum through which you visualize the tympanic membrane and when you increase or decrease the pressure you can see the mobility of the tympanic membrane whereas if there is no air but if there is fluid tympanic membrane vibration will be much lesser so depending upon what is the content of the middle ear you will have different effects of movement on tympanic membrane so this option is wrong that creation of positive or negative pressure has no effect on a normal tympanic membrane no it has an effect so this is your false option so i hope this mcq is solved vipul sharma mulai uh, suicide you were right dilpreet and amit i hope you got the answer see a bulging tympanic membrane may or may not lose the landmark but these two are very closer options but if you see they have given this as no effect at all a bulging tympanic membrane may lose all landmarks whenever there is an effusion it may lose all the landmarks that is true but may not also in certain cases but no effect is absolutely a wrong option <clears throat> so we move to the next mcq a 18 year old boy presented with repeated epistaxis and there was a mass extending into the nose and nasopharynx it was decided to operate on him all the following are true regarding his management except requires radiotherapy before surgery a lateral rhinotomy approach may be used transpalatal approach may be used a transmaxillary approach may be used so they telling you 18 year old boy with repeated epistaxis mass in the nose and nasopharynx so what is your diagnosis over here the diagnosis over here is juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma so it was decided that the operation the patient has to go for surgery so all the following are true about his management except so which is false regarding the management requires radiotherapy a lateral rhinotomy approach may be used transpalatal approach may be used a transmaxillary approach may be used so for jna can you tell me what is this stage when there is extension into the nose or nasopharynx this is 1a as per your radowski staging it is 1a so if it is stage 1a you can use any of the surgical approaches most often what we use is a transnasal endoscopic approach but in older eras when they did not have the availability of endoscope endoscopy or transnasal endoscopic approaches have come very recently about 25 30 years ago only this techniques have started but before that there were various other techniques for treating jna which were there in the nose and nasopharynx so it can be 
approached lat through a lateral rhinotomy incision. So if you see if the tumor is located in the nose or nasopharynx or has extension into the pterygopalatine fossa, you can come anteriorly through the nose that is your transnasal endoscopic approach. You can come inferiorly through the palate. You can open this externally. You can do a lateral rhinotomy and you can elevate the skin subcutaneous tissue. Open the anterior wall of maxilla. Once you have opened the anterior wall of maxilla, you are directly on the tumor and then you can come from lateral aspect. So you can remove the mandible condylar coronoid process remove a chip of bone and retract the uh, muscles of your infratemporal fossa and you can reach this. These are all morbid surgeries which are doing externally which is a lateral rhinotomy or a transpalatal approach or an infratemporal fossa approach. These are very very morbid surgeries. Transnasal endoscopic is more conservative now it is very well advanced and you can do the surgery very very safely so so you can use a lateral anatomy and they're telling you may be used or they're not telling you it is the treatment of choice or it's the surgery of choice they are telling you may be used a trans lateral anatomy used a transpalatal approach can be used a trans maxillary approach can be used but radiotherapy has got no role in jna for a 1a stage of tumor radiotherapy is given only when there is the tumor is inoperable, when there is an extensive intracranial extension or getting a direct supply from the common carotid artery or sorry the internal carotid artery, then you will call it as inoperable tumor. So inoperable tumor, you don't want to take the risk of surgery. So at that situation, you will give radiotherapy. So radiotherapy is not required for an one a which is limited only to nose or nasopharynx. If there is an intracranial extension with supply from internal carotid artery, then you will do a radiotherapy okay so we go to the next next mcq what are the boundaries of trotman's triangle so this is multiple true or false type of questions so there are multiple true answers over here so tell me what are the boundaries of trotman's triangle what is trotman's triangle first you need to know then you will know the boundary so i will teach you what is trotman's triangle after which we will go and discuss that mcq so trotman's triangle is an area which is bounded by superior petrosal sinus superiorly sigmoid sinus posteriorly and your bony labyrinth anteriorly okay it is bounded by superior petrosal sinus sigmoid sinus and your bony labyrinth this triangle is called as your trotman's triangle Okay, now what is the importance of this Trotman's triangle? Trotman's triangle is the key area for entry into posterior cranial fossa. So if you want to enter the posterior cranial fossa through the mastoid, you can drill in this triangle to reach the posterior cranial fossa. So now tell me what are the boundaries? Is bony labyrinth there anteriorly true or false? Is this true or is this false? I'm waiting for your answers. So bony labyrinth anteriorly is true, bony labyrinth posteriorly is false, sigmoid sinus is there posteriorly true, sigmoid sinus anteriorly is false, superior petrosal sinus superiorly is true. Yeah. So I hope you understood the boundaries of Trotman's triangle. Then we go to our next MCQ. A child is normal while crying but develops sinosis and breathlessness at rest. The most probable diagnosis is laryngomalacia, croup, coenal atresia, epiglottitis. So they are telling you that the child is normal while crying but the sinosis and breathlessness are there at rest. So respiratory distress at rest which disappears on crying. 
in which condition do you get this very good dr dilpreet and uh, suddu the answer is coenal atresia so what is coenal atresia so this is your nose this is your nasopharynx the part of the pharynx which lies behind the nasal cavity the communication between the nose and the nasopharynx is called as your coena so this is your coena now if this coena normally it disappears or it is a patent cavity now if this cavity is not patent and it is still occluded then we call it as coenal atresia so coenal atresia is a condition which occurs because of persistence of bucco nasal membrane so bucco nasal membrane separates the primitive oral cavity from nasal cavity and if this membrane does not open up then we call it as coenal atresia now if there is a bilateral atresia children are obligate nasal breathers they do not know how to open the mouth and breathe so if there is atresia on both the sides of the nose then there, there is no communication between the nose and nasopharynx so the child can't breathe but when the child cries the child opens the mouth and he try and cries at that time there is a negative intrathoracic pressure and the air gets sucked in and that will cause disappearance of sinuses or breathlessness so in coenal atresia you get sinuses or breathlessness at rest which disappears on crying but the reverse happens in epiglottitis in epiglottitis there may be respiratory distress at rest but it worsens on crying so epiglottis is swollen already because of inflammation when the child cries there is further congestion of the epiglottis so there is worsening of strider plus when the child cries the epiglottis is also sucked in and that will cause further worsening of strider so in epiglottitis there is worsening of strider laryngomalacia already the epiglottis is loose and lax because it does not have a tone again when the child cries there is a negative intrathoracic pressure the epiglottis gets sucked in and further obstructs the laryngeal inlet causing worsening of strider on crying in croup <clears throat> again they have very small airways larynx trachea bronchus everything is inflamed because of a viral infection if the child cries again there will be narrowing of the airway resulting in worsening of strider okay so we will go with the discussion of coenal atresia very quickly it occurs because of persistence of the bucco nasal membrane can you elaborate to me what is chard syndrome c stands for C is for coloboma iridis. H stands for heart defects. A stands for atresia. R stands for retardation, which can be your mental or growth retardation. G is for genital malformations. and e is for ear malformations so this is about your chard syndrome okay now how do you diagnose coenal atresia so if you have got mucoid discharge in the nose without air bubbles normally if the nose is communicating with the nasopharynx you will have air bubbles in the nose also and so when you blow out there will be air bubbles in the mucoid discharge but if there is an absence of mucoid discharge that will tell you that there is a patient with coenal atresia when you try to pass a catheter the catheter should go from the coena into the nasopharynx and you should able to see it in the oropharynx easily but when you are trying to pass a catheter if you get resistance that further tells you that there is an atresia and if you put a radio opaque dye it doesn't reach the nasopharynx so you will not see that illumination on an x ray that will confirm to you about atresia you can do a ct scan to confirm the extent of atresia so with that we finish a quick discussion on coenal atresia we go to our next mcq a 2 year old child presented with a swelling on the dorsum of nose the swelling is soft and cystic in consistency compressible with frustenberg test positive the clinical diagnosis is meningocele dermoid glioma sebaceous cyst so the diagnosis they have given is option number 1 is meningocele the second one is dermoid 
the third one is glioma and the fourth one is sebaceous cyst so they're telling you the the swelling is soft it is cystic it is compressible and frustenberg test is also positive okay so i think there is some confusion for all of you on this particular topic so i will make this very very easy for you to understand so we will understand what is what are the congenital anomalies in your uh, nasal cavity so first of all to understand that you need to know what is the roof of our nose made up of so the roof of the nose anteriorly is made up of frontal bone and nasal bone in the middle it is formed by the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone posteriorly it is formed by the body of sphenoid bone so you see that all three different bones are forming the roof of your nose which separates your cranial cavity from your nasal cavity now you imagine during development all three have developed from three different uh, bones and they have to fuse now this bone has to fuse anteriorly with this bone and posteriorly with this bone now imagine that there is an area of non fusion what will happen there is a defect in the base of skull so if there is a defect there will be herniation of the cranial tissue into the nose if only the meninges herniate then we call it as meningocele if there is herniation of meninges with brain tissue then we call it as meningoencephalocele now you see they are coming through a small defect and extending into the nasal cavity so it is so this come this becomes also an air trapped cystic swelling so it is soft because meninges and brain are soft and through because it is herniating through a no, small defect into a wider nasal cavity it is also cystic so the consistency is soft and it is cystic now if a swelling is soft in consistency it will be compressible so compressibility test will be positive since it is herniating from a defect if you try to reduce the swelling you can reduce it so reducibility test will be positive now since it is a cystic swelling transillumination test will be positive and since it is communicating with your intracranial cavity any time whenever there is an increased intracranial pressure like when you cough or when you occlude the ijv the intracranial pressure increases and that will cause transmission of that pressure to the swelling and the swelling also size increases so this is called as frustenberg test cough impulse test all of which principle is the same it will be positive so this you see in a meningo seal or a meningo encephalo seal okay so this if you have understood then i will teach you about glioma so what happens in glioma initially they have not fused but later there is a fusion because of delayed fusion some amount of tissue which had got herniated has now got cut off from the brain and has reached the nasal cavity so the glial cells are now outside the central nervous system so nose recognizes it recognizes as foreign a foreign cell and as it will produce extensive fibrosis now a glioma is form in consistency because of fibrosis so if it is form in consistency compressibility test will be negative reducibility test will be negative transillumination test will be negative and your frustenberg test or cough impulse test will be negative so this is how you differentiate a glioma from a meningocele or a meningoencephalocele now what is a dermoid dermoid is a hamartoma which occurs at the line of fusion of any bones so dermoid has soft cheesy sebaceous material or toothpaste like material within it because it contains all the three layers ectoderm endoderm and mesoderm so it is soft in consistency but not cystic as a result it is 
compressible so compressibility test is positive since it is not communicating to any cavity reducibility test is negative trans illumination test is negative because it is not cystic and since it is not communicating to the intracranial cavity frustenberg test is negative so if you get a swelling where all your tests are positive then it is your meningocele all the tests are negative it is your glioma only compressibility test positive rest negative it is your dermoid so the answer for this question will be they have told soft cystic compressibility frustenberg test positive then your answer will be meningocele got it all of you why a meningocele yes <clears throat> okay the first cranial nerve to be involved in cavernous sinus thrombosis is second cranial nerve third cranial nerve fifth cranial nerve or sixth cranial nerve very simple mcq which cranial nerve is to be involved first in cavernous sinus thrombosis yes very good it is the sixth cranial nerve because in the lateral wall of your cavernous sinus you have got the third nerve fourth nerve ophthalmic division and the trigem uh, maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve whereas the sixth nerve is within the lumen of the cavernous sinus so the sixth nerve is the first nerve to be involved in the cavernous sinus thrombosis so with this i finished my half an hour session for today i hope you all understood some important points in my today's class and uh, if you want you can attend more free classes or your special classes on an academy platform these are called as special classes on an academy they are absolutely free you can attend them you will not be charged anything as a part of this coronavirus that's happening epidemic that's happening we are taking uh, a numerous free classes all the educators are putting in their time and taking lot of free classes not paid classes so you can as well enroll for these free classes and benefit from the same because you are not able to go to your institutes for learning or if you are not able to go with your friends to have a group discussion or you can't sit with your uh, colleagues or your friends and uh, study with them at least uh, live classes with a mentor will help you to certain extent come out of this uh, um, you know zone where you are alone and you are studying all by yourself so at least you will have some interaction with the teacher or you will have some revision of some certain topic so that will help you in certain ways so you can attend this special class for an academy which is absolutely free we have structured courses like batch courses subject uh, so each subject wise we have sub topics which are being conducted we have batch course for aims we have respiratory system cns system batch courses for modified for those integrated classes for your next exams so those can be found on your plus subscription which is a paid subscription if you want to take the paid subscription you can use this code to avail a 10% discount and uh, if you have any doubts you can always feel free to whatsapp me yes only whatsapp 9246558053 because i am still working i am still going to the hospital and uh, uh, to cope up with the hospital work and to talk to all of you will be difficult so if you have any doubts please whatsapp whenever i am free i will definitely definitely reply back to all of you please study well don't uh, go into this gloomy weather where you can't go outside can't meet your friends just relax enjoy your time attend the special classes you definitely will have a lot of relaxation onto your mind most often all these special classes are mcq oriented so you won't have uh, you know it's not a boredom that you're listening to it's only theory classes so it's good that if you can attend these classes and make the best of the opportunity that you have until next time bye bye